dear viewers to this episode of the women's show it is the first episode in 2023 and we are hoping that you've been you know recapping and reminding yourselves of what last year was really looking like i know a lot of people are doing their resolutions and trying to find you know strategy for the new year and so today at civic space we want to sit down and map out something for women where are we going what is our resolve for 2023 what does that atmosphere look like so far? And what commitments, if any, that we can take into this year as we work, as we strategize, as we organize, but also as we heal. <laughs> I think I have a, a therapist and, <laughs> and a great civic actor today to join me. And I'm going to give him a chance to introduce themselves and then we dive into this conversation. Ladies, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I'm going to give you a chance to introduce yourselves in the best way you want to be remembered for this <laughs> conversation, and then we kick off. Um, so my name is Janet Kantala Makatana. I am glad to be here on the Women's Show. I'm a psychologist, but also the executive director of Safe Places mm -hmm. Uganda. And I like the topic of today, of you know where we are just coming into the big new year, and there is so much. It's like a clean slate, of course, riding on the efforts of last year. Mm -hmm. So I am glad to be here having this conversation of the earlier we heal as mm -hmm. women and the better chances we stand yeah. Welcome at achieving to our show, resolutions. Really. Thank you. Yeah. Charity. Uh, very good morning. Charity Kalebo Ahimbisiwe, Executive Director at the Electoral Laws Institute. Of course, most certainly always passionate about promotion of elections, mm -hmm. passionate about good governance, passionate about women and the issues that, because governance cannot be without women. Exactly. Women are a central component of governance and uh, economic growth cannot be without women. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it looks like society is all thrust on a woman, growth of that society, family. So I'm happy to be in this conversation mm -hmm. and to start there probably to help us think outside the box, but also yes. look at a difficult year we came out of a difficult year yeah. and entered it with the poverty from 2022. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Dived hard with it into 2023. And we must forge a way forward because only dead people cannot forge a way indeed, forward. So. Indeed. And welcome to the short charity. And I think on that very note, because as we wind down 2022, you know, there was a gloom around, you know, what next? Yeah. And in hindsight, when I look back, it almost felt like the year had been so long mm -hmm. and yet with so much economic hardship. I yes. mean, fuel prices went up, commodity prices, groceries went up, food prices went up. And it looked like there were all these other shocks outside and within that made it so impossible for an everyday woman or even just an everyday Ugandan to forge a way forward. Mm. Now, fast forward 2023. I know for a fact that there's a little bit of uncertainty that is still looming around of what this year will look like. Yeah. But if we were to project, you know, what are the, what does that look like for us, especially in the movement? Because I also know work was disrupted for us as a women's movement. So what does that look like if we were to project for 2023? Now, uh, as a women movement, I think one of the key things that we need to focus is leadership. Mm. We need strong leadership again for that movement. What happened was, like you say, the disruption. Mm. It got into our skin. Yeah. So the women got a bit deviated yeah. and actually even on the political scene. Yeah. You saw Namugans are going after the exactly. speaker and the speaker going after Namugans. Exactly. And then now it has become an issue of saying the house is no longer a serious house. It is a house of sentiments. Yeah. It's a house of pettiness. Yeah. It is a house of you want to display feelings. Mm. Have these women sat back to think yeah. that, hello, this is impacting yeah. on the whole movement exactly. because... A woman in a space is a representative of the global woman yes. in Uganda, mm -hmm. but also the bigger uh, a woman across the board. Mm -hmm. So have they sat back and asked themselves, we are two sisters and we are spending a lot of time and energy on useless matters. Exactly. Can we focus on the issues? So the movement needs to go back onto leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we look at leadership, every one of us has a challenge on our hands. What did we do well in 2022 that we want to continue with? 
what didn't do didn't we do well yeah. that we want to drop yeah. Yeah. and yeah. forget about yeah. altogether yeah. Yeah. amongst the things that i think we did well we continue to put out the issues that affect yes. women on a continuous basis mm -hmm. we also looked out for children mm -hmm. we also looked out for financial mishandling and spaces where women were not getting enough financing mm -hmm. we supported each other like when the women were saying, okay, now we don't have hope, we, we continue to support women across the board mm -hmm. and went on to train women. Yeah. Now we need to step up that. We need to go to the countryside, continue to open their minds to participate, not yeah. only in political participation, but also economic participation. Yes. What did we see as the year was coming to an end? President Museveni was down in Kasese, Numpondwe border was opened, and there is a new market there for yes. Congo. Yes. There is a big opportunity in Congo. You see, uh, those Kenyans, one of the things that has helped them to move forward mm -hmm. is that whenever there is an opportunity next they to them, take they take it. And take they it. don't only take it, they actually, push themselves yes, there and they must Congo has cause business, yeah. yes they have Kate to make business in Congo. they have to make a difference and they're strategic in their thinking uh -huh. now that is it the leadership i'm talking about should yeah. cause us to have strategic thinking for congo right now mm -hmm. the Mpondwe border is open mm -hmm. the marketplace is open and it's always women in, in the, the markets market. yes. exactly. so now what we need to do is let's map out what do they need to be taking to congo mm -hmm. Most certainly not food, exactly. not potatoes, mm. not tomatoes, not onions. Mm. Why? Because Congo is as green as we as are. Uganda, and sure. sometimes they have better food than mm. we have. So what do we need to be thinking about? Do they have mobile phones? For exactly. us, we have, mo mobile, we have phone. mobile phones. Do they have jackets for their mm. mobile phones? Do they have screen guards? Do they? We need to think, what is it that is the need for these people? Mm. And yes, people are saying, oh, the war hasn't ended. The president is just giving us false hope. Yes, the war hasn't ended. But the amount of dollars being sunk exactly. in Congo are massive. And those people are there with dollars waiting to spend. Yes. So we're not going to lament for a long time. Now it's time for us to, to focus. Mm. Let us keep focused and see where is the opportunity. Tap in there, mm. innovate. Mm. We could do better this year. I hear you. Yeah. Mm. And maybe also to build on mm. that point, Janet, a lot of, and I love that charity said it, we works. People pushed yes. on every front. Yes. But what was missing in this link was something that only happened in a time I needed to see it. In 2018, when the women came together to talk about, you know, sexual violence, you know, femicides, mm. there was a concerted effort to mm. make sure that this voice must be heard. Yes. And it was women from the embassies, women from organizations, I mean, lawyers. It was a consortium of women from yes. the marketplaces. I almost look like in as much as that on different levels we push mm. always coming together and having this collective voice was very massive and very critical today when you google about the women's march you find a history for it yeah and you can now track back on what gains we've had Over post that. Yes. yeah post yes. that so how going into 23 how do we push you know, for joint concerted efforts, collective work, mm. collective pools, mm. so that, you know, that once vibrant, when women spoke with people listened, like yes. the women have spoken. Yes. When we did pressers, people were like, oh, the women have spoken. Mm. So how do we get back to there? Okay. Now that we've finished, you know, you know, coming out of this mental drug, the COVID pandemic, you know, the, the disparateness of things, mm trying to build little by little on the sides. How do we now come to work together. together? Okay, thank you so much, Trish. Like you said in your introduction that uh, uh, we've, been, we've had a very long year, mm. a very long year with very many challenges yeah. and changes. And those challenges have also impacted women in the movement. Yes, it's not only the you. last woman yeah, who yeah. is out there. Exactly. So, And we know that the process of recovery does not... Uh, spring forward, it's gradual. Mm. That even when the COVID ended in, okay, the, 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 the pandemic um, came to um, slow down in 2021, 2022 has been rife exactly. with the uh, economic hardships, mm. with, and that is what we have passed through. Even the economic hardships themselves have impacted on women as well. Mm. So for 2023, while we want to 
um, while we want to also ride on charity's leadership, mm. while we want to have more leadership coming in and having that that big uh, uh, bang that we had in 2018, mm. we need to sit to I mean first have individual sitbacks mm -hmm. as, as 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 women. Yeah. If you are that leader in that position that you have been in and you have faced the same conditions that that woman that you're fighting for in the in the rural setting has faced, have you had a reflective meeting? for yourself as an individual. Yeah. Because we can only be as strong as a team uh, if we are strong as individuals. That individuals come together to form, form the collective. Mm -hmm. So that individuals that are coming together, are they broken? Are we broken? Because this- Do we, we need to do healing? Yes, we, do we mm -hmm. need to do healing? Because I know for a fact that the work that we do in the movement is very, very challenging emotionally. Mm. That you feel like, oh, you said you've worked, but sometimes you feel like we've worked, but there is so much to do. Mm. Even we've worked, but where is the impact of mm. us working? Mm. If our budget is still at the same level that it is, that is okay. it is not filtering mm. down mm. to the last person. Mm. If we are still having 56% of, uh, of um, uh, people, women that are being beaten up and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. battered and whatever, sexually if we, abused, sexually yeah. abused, if we're yeah. having 22, 22 percentages of women and even the cases that are being prosecuted, you know, if the process that we are fighting for that women should have a fair process of reporting and mm -hmm. getting justice mm -hmm. for sexual crimes is still, so sometimes you as an individual who is in the movement, you might tend to get to get uh, derailed, mm -hmm. to get derailed and mm -hmm. worn out. Mm -hmm. And this is not just in the movement. Now imagine all the other factors that have contributed. Mm -hmm. The COVID, the economic slump, mm -hmm. and now we are saying, we also feel like we have not done our very best. Mm -hmm. We also have that feeling of, we've not, we, we're not- Have I done that yes, most? Yes, we've not done 2018. Mm -hmm. So you're also putting pressure on the movement that is worn out from this. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying, we want to see better 2023. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I say, yes, we want to see better 2023. Have we looked into how we have performed and how as individuals can self-improve mm -hmm. and heal mm -hmm. and do that 2023 with a bang? I hear you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So yes, leadership will come in. Yes, we're going to be strategic and mm -hmm. position mm -hmm. ourselves for Congo. I hear you. Who is positioned? Who, how, how are the people we are positioning? Are they ready to work? How are the people we are positioning? Mm -hmm. Are we telling this people there is money in Congo when this person hears a bullet, they freeze? Have we healed? Have we done psychosocial support to those women? Because you don't get a person from Kampala to go to the Ampondwe border. Mm -hmm. It will be that rural woman it who will be, be the within. People near Mpondwe. And these are people Pushing that have them. been chased recently by ADF from their homes of, you know. Are we looking at the, 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 the unit mm -hmm. of the women that we want to empower? Okay, that we are working hard to get the statistics up or better. Mm. Okay, so yes, I appreciate we've done a very wonderful uh, job as a movement. And yes, I know that, of course, um, collective engagement is the way forward. Mm. And I know that without collective engagement, without the big voice of the women, but we need all women, even the leader. We need the leader to be in a better frame for us to then move forward mm. as a movement. Mm. Yes. Let me bring you in charity. Uh, one thing the president said, and I quote, he chose his fishermen. And part of the fishermen <laughs> are fisher women. women. <laughs> <laughs> and it nice looks like we had one on the vice president ticket, we had one on prime minister, we oh, yeah. had one on speaker, mm. but deputy... Prime Minister is a woman. And so it looked like there were so many women yes. that were at the forefront of the political environment of this country. Mm. And for us as a movement, we, we, we tap ourselves and like kudos. We yeah. have representation. Yeah. But one conversation that continues is, is this representation delivering for us as a women's movement? And how do we tap into the mass of, oh, there are more women or fisher women in these spaces, but are we having the divide of politics and delivery when it comes to women's issues? And if not, how do we, you know, leverage such positions to be able to not just pig big piggy back on them, but also use them as mainstream efforts for us to at least elevate the women of Uganda? If anything, on individual basis as these leaders, but also on a collective and on a national basis, given that they hold power. Yes. Within this government, yes. I actually think this is a very good question because uh, for a long time the women wanted to take the space, yeah. and now we are really in the space. We are, 
and you you've just mentioned just a small bit of the exactly. one of the fishermen and women but the women mm -hmm. fisher women the prime minister i think has not delivered uh, strongly on the platform of women, no has the vice president. Mm -hmm. I've not seen them say we are organizing a meeting, for example, like we did with mm -hmm. International Human Rights Day. Mm -hmm. We celebrated women, but we were reflecting on the question of sexual harassment yes. and the increasing number of uh, uh, mistreatment of women in homes and violence. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about issues of marital rape and how it's difficult to prove, mm -hmm. how women have gone to workplaces and they've been taken advantage of and are, don't even have where to, to break to, the yeah, ice yeah, from yeah, and yeah. they've continued mm -hmm. to suffer. Mm -hmm. Those issues were big and rife as the year was coming to an end at that human rights conference. Mm -hmm. Uganda Human Rights Commission invited the Ministry of Gender I want to shock you that your minister, Betty Amongin, did not Didn't come. She did not, she sent a representative of the Equal Opportunities Commission. And uh, when uh, Madame Sophia came, I wondered, okay, was there a conversation between these two people to Before, know how to exactly. continue these conversations? Because we do international conversation, mm -hmm. and then it is very good by the time we're leaving that conversation, everybody was like, yeah, yeah, these are critical issues. Mm -hmm. We must continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. And there is no one to continue the conversation. Now, yeah. this is the thing. Is the vice president going to con continue that conversation mm. for the women? Is the prime minister willing to continue that conversation oh, for the women? Yeah. Is Betty Amongin willing yeah. to continue that conversation for the women? Because mm. at that mm. conference, there was even the conversation of migrant workers mm. and the issues they've yes. gone through. And we saw government pulling back on the thing of Saudi Arabia mm. and the number mm. of deaths that we have had in Saudi Arabia and then quarter and looking out for new spaces for women to go and work yeah. and yeah. send money to support yeah. their children. So uh, who is continuing this conversation at the political scene, even with these big names that you've the dropped around? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't seem to have one. Mm -hmm. And so have we benefited from mm -hmm. their exactly. sitting in those spaces? Exactly. Not too much. The fisher women have <laughs> gone fishing, other things. They have not fished for the women themselves. And I, I think they're they fishing for the political I think for the political authority. So for them, also, they are they're, they're also fishing for their own interests to yes. remain there. But I think now I want to direct directly address them and say they should also fish for the women movement yes. and they should fish for the issues that are actually oppressing the ordinary woman because you deal with the issue for a woman and you've dealt with the issue for society. Exactly. You ignore the issue for a woman and you you've ignore ignored the society. issue for society. I will tell you that the hunger that happened in Karamoja mm. was all because of this whole thing of ignoring mm. the, the women mm. and the contribution that the women have exactly. and we have not seen it change. Women in Karamoja continue to suffer. They don't have uh, economic emancipation. Mm -hmm. They are despised by men. But not only in Karamoja, even here in Kampala, yes. we still see yes. juvenists. Mm. The other day, a, 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 a man was wearing a police uniform with a police tag. I could run for you that video. Stopped me and said, how can a woman despise me and be disciplined on the road? And I was thinking, okay. uh -huh. when did it become a gender issue? Agenda issue. So what was the indiscipline? Well, the first thing I wanted to know was what was my crime in the penal code or in the traffic act? There was nothing. Why what it was, was how can a woman disrespect me, a man? A man. And my first reaction, I was about to... <laughs> and tell him look then son. I said okay but this man has a gun for me yeah. I don't have a gun <laughs> <laughs> the power structure has changed it has already changed it was already yeah. upside down yeah. and these issues are real I hear you. so I, I, I sat back and I told him okay sir let us go to CPS because then at CPS yes. I would have had an opportunity mm. to bring him to his corner yes. and, and I would have had my power mm. then to Put him on the spot. Say, okay. look, tell me my crime mm -hmm. in the penal code and in and the then, traffic and act. Then or, and then we this. can deal with mm -hmm. it. But uh, so that's the kind of um, sentiments we continue to feel, mm -hmm. the patriarchal sentiments, mm -hmm. the dominance mm -hmm. and issues not being resolved. And we continue to wrap these things under the carpet. They continue to affect women on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But we need to go back and look 
where are the gains? The gains yeah. are you've been appointed. You're seated in this space. There? From there. Mm. You have influence. The other gain is you have influence. Yes, you do. What are the issues the women want to push for 2023? Yes. One of them is good leadership. Mm. Two is financing mm. for the small things that they are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Three is to look out for the opportunities for them. Mm. Four, the ones in prisons, the ones suffering, the mm. ones with children, mm. the ones who have gone abroad to work. Mm. They have issues that are affecting them. Mm. How are you responding are to you those issues? With these issues? So I think we also need to, as a movement, come up with a compact quickly. But these are the things. These the are the issues, issues that need that we to be. This to is the agenda, mm. and that, that that reminded me of a fact that we used to have the civil society, you know, New Year, New Year, conversation. Year conversation. And I'm imagining if that's something, even for us as a women's movement, it need is. to have. It's like this it is, is our compact. It is. These are our issues. Mm -hmm. Deal with them. Exactly. So yeah. me on that, Trish, mm. Trish. What I see when you're saying that, uh, that they appointed them. Yes. And so uh, these people are in positions, those positions, not because the women appointed them or they rode on the, on the fact that they were women to be in those positions. Mm. Of course, we do not understand the, I mean, the reasoning of the appointing authority, yeah. but what you can see from the way they then conduct themselves when they're in those positions mm. of authority, mm. it is not to say that, what will you women do to me if I don't do your women issues? Are you yes. the ones yeah. who appointed me? Yes. Are you the ones who appointed me? Okay. And then also you have to look at them even before they got into positions of power. Were they living sister principles? Oh yeah. Uh, even because it were manifests. They for the movement were they for the movement? Were they for the movement? Were you. they for the women? You know, I might say no, Jagalanya Bachala, but how have you been? Well, how have you been manifesting power before been that power? Then the other than that, then there will be tokens in. You know, yeah. that will be just, you know, let, let us deceive give them, them let us give, give them, them free and then they will clap, especially mm. that they will say, that because there is a divide, they will say that civil society women will be happy, mm. that <laughs> they have women in positions of power, mm. but has it translated? Into and it also goes back mm. to the individual as a person. How has that person been? Is that the person that will be in their office and will mi mistreat a woman mm. and then come and come to the forefront and say now, I am for women. Yeah, you know, you see, we have a uh, speaker, we have a uh, vice president, we have this and this. How are we as women? Are we not uh, looking to reap from where we didn't sow, mm. you know, as a movement? Mm. Are we looking at, you know, now that we, we can use you, you're in... So we are just you know, riding on the fact that now we don't know their politics. You do I not hear, know, yeah. you do mm. not know their politics as to how they came there. However, it is all not lost. Because then, if a person is in that position of authority, and mm. they even have some sympathies towards these women issues, that's when the civil society, the, the, that's when the booklet can, can come in. Our five a points, mm. a compact, our mm. five points can come in. And then we can go and seek to meet them and then actually address our, our, our issues and, uh, and ask to see where we can fit in. Mm. We are fitting into mm. their agenda, but we won't lose any opportunity if we can get something for the women, even despite the fact that we are not there. Uh, and, and you bring up a, yes. an important point, and I think that is what dives me into civic participation. Yes. One of the conversations we were having on the Women for Uganda group was, perhaps we need to stop looking at them and start to work with citizen agency yes. and make sure we have this civic consciousness within the people and within the women, within the Ugandans, so that the efforts that we are looking for will come from mass organizing rather than political efforts or political organizing. And so if the people know that they need this, then they'll be able to push for it. So if the women know that sexual-based violence is the issue, mm. then if we are to empower them and educate them and you know drive them, and I think we did that when it came to the Citizens Compact, if you remember the work mm -hmm. there, yeah. that we had mm. different citizens you know, engage, have meetings, have town halls, to come up with with a citizens compact. So is it possible that in our in building on civic engagement and civic in participation, we can push you know the women's agenda to have it at the forefront, create a document, a living document that we can always come back on to check and track our progress. Yes. But in the end, push for citizen engagement. Can I do that? So I actually, I, I like I like that idea very much mm. because if the voice comes from, if for example you're my representative 
in parliament. Mm. And yes, you're there as a woman, but I know the issues that are affecting me as a woman. And then I can rise from within because I have that power as a, as, as, as a citizen. Mm. I can vote you out. Mm. Much as you'll be appointed into the position, you won't be appointed speaker if you're not my member of parliament mm. for that. True, true. So if we ride on mass civic education mm. for women issues, mm. you know, because we've seen that these people that that are in those positions of power have actually even turned against women in some instances. Mm. You know, when you look at when you're talking about the sexual reproductive bill and whatever, it will be the women who are saying you're teaching our. Yeah. And yet, mm. when we come when we come to uh, the sexual gender based violence, mm. and then we are saying, but these are the figures, and say, but there are issues that we can do. And so the bill answers to, the, yes, the, the to question prevent of the numbers. To mm. prevent the numbers, then the person will come at the top and thwart that effort. Mm. But if then I have authority to send to positions of power mm. the people that will speak for me on my issues mm. as a woman then I should be able to exercise that if mm. I am into my knowledge. Mm. Yes. So Charity, can we do that work? So on the question of uh, citizens' participation, especially mm. women participation, in terms of organizing, I don't think the women can fail to organize. Mm. That's true. The problem that women are facing, unlike everybody else, is the harsh economic times and the fact that there is no funding. Mm -hmm. And you see, for organizing, you also need a bit of funds. Yes. Because you're going to print material, you're going to lobby people, mm -hmm. you're going to meet in spaces, you need data, mm -hmm. you need phone conversations, you need online conversations mm -hmm. like the ones mm -hmm. we're holding. And we cannot have citizen TV moving across exactly. the whole country. Exactly. If we had the funds, we actually we would, would be, be happy to, to move Gloria mm -hmm. to Mbale, pick the views of the women in Mbale, go to Soroti, go to, uh, go to all these small villages, mm -hmm. go to Kanungu, mm -hmm. because right now they've just showed you about Kambuga Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the women who give birth in that, in hospital. that hospital. Meanwhile, they have never said it for 30 years that women were giving women birth, in, giving this birth in this hospital until a minister, a man, was flown there. And, and he did he could not, And then he said they had to be flown to Kampala. <laughs> and then the journalists brought up the yes. story. So until Glow goes there, and those things will not be unearthed. Yeah. And for Glow to go there, we need money to facilitate exactly. her. We need to give her her transport yes. refund. We need to move the crew and pay them. So I am saying the question of funding is a big question to organizing. Mm, yes. And it's a big question to raising the issues the yes. way you want them to yes. be raised. Yes. So are we being uh, sidelined by funding? Yes, we are in a big sense. Mm. If we still had the small monies that we had, we would have. Yeah. But yeah. we are going to work within the resources that, that we, we have. have. Because we already have women across the spaces. Yeah. Now what we need to do is to consciously begin to change their mindset, to look yes. at the things mm. that we would have agreed on exactly. on their agenda. That then will cause them to participate. Mm -hmm. They will participate because of the following reasons. Look at the education policy that government mm -hmm. is suggesting. Mm -hmm. That is because that King's College Budo is paying 2.5, Nabsunsa Girls School is paying 2.2. Let me tell you, Nabsunsa, when it was started, because I'm an OG of Nabsunsa, mm -hmm. I'll tell you this mm -hmm. history. It was started to help the intelligent children coming from modest, modest families. families. Now you're charging them 2.2 million. What are you saying? They that children from poor more. men's families and modest minutes. families who are brilliant will not attend school because you're charging the same fee like Gayaza. Like Gayaza. It came on board to help those who would not go to Gayaza or <laughs> Nabingo. Exactly. No, no, not Nabingo. Who would not go to Gayaza or, or Namagunga. Namagunga. But they were equally very good where do we accommodate them? And they don't have a lot of money. That was the history. And, so and now you disparity. kill the history, bury the school, mm. and then who are you going to help? Mm. Because these young girls, we are coming out. I am here influencing country thinking, yes. consciousness, yes. Uh, political thought, mm. everything, mm. because I went to Nabisunsa. And it was affordable and to it was, go it there. And it was possible for yes. me to go there. Yes. Now, block off all the girls who can be like me, and mm. you see what you're doing. Yes. You're killing your own country. If you have 50 charities who are being churned out, mm. then you have something that you're talking about. Mm. If you have 100 charities, a Yunis Musime is yes. an Absunsa product. Uh, yeah, yeah. Block yes. Yunis. Okay, and now. you block 50 more Yunis. Exactly. Uh, uh, the whole Amwa, which she's running, mm. the Women's Shazim 
and mm-hmm. once the pressure is done, you have blocked all that. You have sealed it off. So I, I think what I am trying to say is when you push the agenda of a woman from her oh. own eyes, let her see it through her lens. You get yes. her bigger. You get impact. her to participate mm. more critically and faster. So this question of school fees, we need to support government like yesterday. These stories of the private schools saying, hey, we came here to make profits. We okay. are a business entity, business-minded. It is system. a public good. Exactly. And the law is settled that it is a public, public good. So please, as you go in there, remember you are guided by the Act, the yeah. Education Act. So mm-hmm. now us as women, we now to also need to come up and say quickly, yes, no. our Mary Hill, we mm. need it back to affordable standards. Yes. We need Weranyanje back to back affordable, to affordable standards. We need Nebsunsa mm. back to affordable. We need Gayaza back. Because we yeah, have girls our girls. School. Yes, we still have a girl's agenda. Mm. And yes, there was the affirmative action, but notice now, there is the whole conversation. Do we still need that affirmative and I action? I there is a conversation on 50-50. Yes, mm. parity. It's also going down. And I was like, okay, <laughs> when we have parity, uh-huh. do we still keep our affirmative seats? Uh-huh. Because it's important to have affirmative seats. Mm-hmm. And rightly so. We are never going to come to a place where we are equal with the men. Uh-huh. But uh, the conversation is still going and saying, no, 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 get those seats away. Because that's one of the reasons they're saying, okay, the parliament is now bloated. We are 529. Mm -hmm. Can we start by removing the women? Because if we remove the women, they are the big uh, thrust. We are good to go. Let them compete with the men. And I have had strong voices, even from the women movement, supporting Mm -hmm. that position. Because they say the women who came on the women ticket have not supported the other women. Now, those are things that the movement needs to iron out as well. Mm. The movement needs to sit down and think through that. Is it a good one? Is it a bad one? Mm. What are the pros and the cons of it? Mm. If we go for, okay, yes, for me, for example, Mm. I push for a smaller parliament. Mm. Most certainly, I want a smaller number of members of parliament. Because Mm. where are we spending all our taxpayers? 500 plus people. You know, and people are splashing in our faces, Mm. Range Rovers, Mm. what they are showing. You poor, poor people. You go there, die Mm. in your misery. Mussolini type. Mm. Pull off one feather, throw it down. Mm, For mm, me, I will be comfortable where I am. So I push for a smaller parliament. However, even when I am for a smaller parliament, I'm still for affirmative affirmative action. action. Thank you. Because if you look at the electioning (laughs) process, uh, you know, the, 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 the... the, the way they have by uh, commercialized commercial elections. Yes. Yeah. And then you say that this woman who is already disenfranchised exactly. economically is going to exactly. compete with this man who for this position who has his money. Also, because they will access a loan faster. Faster. No, a loan only, but also just basic, basic, empower, like economic empowerment. We're mm. already uh, uh, at, at the tail end I, 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 of yeah. the economic mm. you know, situation. Mm. So if you're saying that now, let's do 50 50 parity. As in, it's already unfair mm. for, to start with. So yes, smaller, I agree entirely, smaller because of still the financial, the, the, like the national financial mm. issues. Mm. But how can we then position that women can also take up in fair or equal measure these positions of authority mm. or power? Yes. And I think the unfortunate bit about women's political participation is on a constant women have been known to, we really critically look at what we are gaining. Mm. And so every other time we've noticed that with this representation, we are not getting, you know, the half stake of what we want. Mm. On a constant, we go back to account. I think, if anything, in politics, women are held accountable too much, Mm. way beyond the men. Because men will show up, I mean, I think it is do whatever, I mean, the the (laughs) level of, 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 Investigation, Zake mm. faces won't be the same Namgans that we'll go through, and yet their issues are the same in discipline. But maybe to I digress. <laughs> no, no, because you see, what you're saying with the political leaders, but all women, mm. even in the workspace. Yes. Because we, we know we're already fighting a systematic injustice. Mm. That a if, systemic. Yes, yes. A systemic, yes, a systemic injustice. So when, when we are already in, um, in, in, Position of power doesn't mean that even that woman who is at home the is already... The has disappeared. They don't. They don't. I so they're already there mm-hmm. and will be held to higher standards 
by society, by our fellow women, but we just have to proceed, mm. you know, and go beyond that. And I and I hear you on all those fronts. So I think one one thing that stood out for me last year and maybe will continue this year is you know the resilience of women, especially when it came to economic thriving. Mm. And while some lost their jobs and some most probably lost their businesses, there's a resilience that has followed us through the year. I mean one thing I have known, I don't know how our mothers did it. I don't know I, I, if she was there, I would ask her. But there was never a day there wasn't anything. At least they would try. Mm. And I hosted women here who want somewhere hawkers, some work in the markets. And when they speak on resilience, you Oof. stop and tell yourself, okay, I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. <laughs> yes. Because I'll tell you, I will walk so that my children <laughs> eat. And they can walk for five kilometers. Or even ten. Market. But outside town. one of the things that I'm disappointed about government, and I keep saying it every time, is that they know that the backbone of Uganda is agriculture. Mm -hmm. Okay, And then they also know that the biggest people who support agriculture are women. Oh, yeah. And they have failed to organize them. Secondly, they have failed to support them. Do you know every document you open will say, Modernization of agriculture. Exactly. Irrigation of agriculture. And then we have schemes. Mechanization. Industrialization. Mm. Yoga. Mm. The EPDM. And all of them will have a very good uh, 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 line or exactly. tagline on agriculture and improving of that agriculture. You know, if, if actually effort had been put in improving and training women to understand how they do this better farming. Exactly. We would not even suffer hunger and famine. Karamoja would never know famine. Uh, uh, even <laughs> us who are Karamoja. going to... Because Other like this year, Uganda. we are really going to suffer a lot of famine mm -hmm. because of climate change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you see how December suddenly had too much rain? Yes. We were there shivering. Yes. <laughs> and then at the turn of the year, and I switched the to sun. too much sun. <laughs> I was like, how? How do we go from too much rain mm. to... And we were flooding sand. everywhere. Mm. And by the way, no, we those floods, that. No. they affected gardens. They affected they maize, yes. uh, matoke gardens, whatever. Everything, the food stuff so has been really... there is a harvest that won't happen. Exactly. Mm. And there is food that wasn't even kept in the silos. We don't mm. have silos. Mm. So my challenge to the government, and I said it, and I will still say it, it is my year starter and projector, mm -hmm. and the only way to put them on spot. We have 70,000 villages in Uganda, Uganda. established 70,000 silos across yes. Uganda, so that we can work food. with the 70,000 villages mm -hmm. to deal with the question of food, food. security. Mm -hmm. The first Maslow's need mm -hmm. is the food. food. Yes. If thing. we don't have food, you know, we would rather walk around naked, but we need our <laughs> food. We need food. <laughs> we, need we need food. That's why we wake up in the morning to go and work. We actually work so our fridges are full of food. Exactly. Food. <laughs> food is critical. And we need to put our focus there. If we're going to succeed in 2023, and if we're going to succeed in the years going forward, actually, yeah. if you look at the developed world, the first thing they deal with is it's a question of food. That they even have surplus. They have surplus. Mm. And even when they are freezing, mm. they know they have they food. Have food. Mm. That's why for them, their weather is not as good as ours has been. Mm. It's now getting disrupted. Yes. And we need to think of that very fast, that mm. our weather is changing in patterns we can't understand. Mm. We used to know oh, we shall plant around this time and we shall have a surround now this time. You now you can't tell. know. Because you put your food there, then it dries up with the mm -hmm. sun. Then you will not put your food there mm. and... It will... Uh, and then it will, you won't have food to eat. You won't have place. any food to you. eat, yeah. So we, we need to think about the question of climate change, environment, very seriously. And food security. And food security. Mm. If I were a government, beyond just saying I'm not going to spend on infrastructure the way I have spent on it, yes. and beyond saying, okay, it's PDM time, I'm going to spend most of this money on PDM because of what I have known with the Mioga and uh, uh, the, the other PMA, mm, 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 the, the uh, agricultural something, uh, the nuts, the what? The nuts, had all those so programs. Many programs. And they were not successful. Mm -hmm. I would channel my money now to think about the question of Infrastructure how do I concept. organize my Ugandans enough to produce culture. enough food? Mm -hmm. Enough that we have surplus to even export. Port and and it, especially the dry grains, those mm -hmm. ones make sure that for us we have some seed which we can plant somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then I would also organize people in knowing 
who is producing enough manure ah. for people to put in ah. their gardens because also Important. the gardens got changed by the fact that we've been putting cavera we've done all this environmental thing is interlinked on many things mm -hmm. who's producing that manure where are we putting it mm -hmm. and how do we then disseminate it to people that's the information mm -hmm. i've been talking about information is going to drive us forward and the funny thing is the agriculture system has a cycle around it. Mm -hmm. And so there are many other jobs that will come along the way. Yeah. Because then you start to think of value addition. Yes. And so the modernization and industrialization becomes a thing. Yes. Before we even talk about it, you know, in hindsight, we need to be able to first begin with what are we doing agriculturally to make sure we survive. We internalize the process. Yes. We understand the process. We plan for the process. And, we do. and then we do. And, and while and we, we are keep doing, the woman central no, to yes. we, Because we know she will be the 70 percent yes. we know she's the one who will farm the until the garden, the garden. Exactly. and then so that means if we do that then we are pulling out a big percentage of women to come to at least level if the men you know. don't steal the money because the challenge is yes. it's not that the women are void of the economic activities when it mm. comes to agriculture yes but that even when they do the tilling of the land yes it's very possible mm. that they never get the proceeds of that land so that, you know for example there is an opportunity with mm. cassava after the president went internationally to say oh it's one of the uh, of products that is used in the production of drugs mm. and it can help them to produce some of the drugs that are international mm. and so the people are thinking so you have enough cassava for us to even import where is it i tell and you by the no time food. they will start say import give us cassava we will not have nothing to export yeah, exactly even because we eat. even the one we eat yeah, right yeah, now have you looked for cassava on the market and it's very expensive you yeah, get like three fingers three mm. fingers or four fingers or five thousand and yet in the past it was mm, one small thing to do so mm. if for him he has now thought okay this is where we can pos possibly export then go back to the farmers, the arrange them, mm. and tell them, let's grow. It reminds me of the vanilla grow. conversation. You people see? planted. <laughs> the Mukono people, my Mukono people planted, planted a lot of vanilla. How about and coffee? there was yeah. no market. How about coffee right <laughs> so now? Think, and who has taken the, the coffee? That we are having is um, <laughs> consistency. As you said, that who is going to carry on the conversation thereafter, mm. even yeah. all these plants, it is who is going to then propagate, continue having these yes. conversations. And then when you say that if a woman is convinced to you know to do her cassava and she sells and the husband will might take the money, then we say we're going to do multi pronged approaches to education of these women. We are telling you yes, agriculture will take you out of poverty, but we're also telling you you should be able to know your rights and demand for your. So we do not we will not focus as a movement. We are going to we are going to. It goes back to funding. Yeah, yes, <laughs> I know it goes back to funding, but I always also say even with minimal funding, mm. then we should not. Uh, not not do the little that we can, even okay. in individual capacity. It okay. starts with your empowering your the person that you work with, mm -hmm. or the woman that you come across. Because I always ask most of the you know my sisters are like, are you living sister principles? It's mm -hmm. just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Like, are we doing it? You know, in our and small and capa our small capacities. In our small capacities, because when you look at the grand scheme of things, you've just been referring to PDM and whatever. Mm -hmm. The the people that have thought for us. Have thought, have thought and brought these things to us, but then they, it's like they throw them then down. They left it for us to interpret uh -huh. it. They've thrown them down without deepening, yes. you know, without going the extra mile. If you're talking about mechanization and value addition and commercialization, mm. what are you mechanizing? What are you commercializing? Are you what, are you, woman? Does what, what are you telling the everyday woman? What are you telling that lady that is deep down in Vutambala? Mm. The last mile the, woman. The last mile woman, that one. That now you see we should be able to be self-sustaining as a country and produce things ourselves. For her, is she going to produce medicine? I hear you. She's going to produce cassava, but how can she produce a cassava? On a light scale. Mm. If she has a light scale land. If she has land. Let's take a break and then come back and, you know, have this conversation around a almost 50 trillion budget. But what does that also mean to women? And what's our stake in this budget? Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Civic Space TV. Don't forget to like, to share, to comment. 
and to invite a friend over so that you listen to these conversations. But most importantly, so that you have a reference point to things that you can continue having dialogue on in your communities. That is, before we broke, we were talking about economics and, you know, the state of agriculture in regards to women. Mm. But part of that is the budget. The budget framework paper came out and it's at 49.9 trillion, seemingly 50. And I'm not void of the reality that we will also have supplementary budgets come as the year goes along. But for women, the concern is what is our stake when it comes to budget, you know, the budgetary process, the budgetary planning, how can women actively be engaged you know, in critically understanding what is going on when it comes to the national money because it's our money as well. But also the other critical thing I want us to dive into is on how we can come from such a high-end budget in the times of recovery to be able to, you know, to, to factor in the fact that we need to recover at a place that we understand or at a financial level that we can sustain, given that we have a debt to service that takes up part of our budget. We have a, a half, half service budget that is foreignly serviced. So how do we, in the totality of this narrative of a 15 trillion, trillion budget of a debt of women, but then also of such money in these times, how do we factor in women in this conversation, in this budget process? Okay. I'll so of charity. course, full monetization of Uganda's, uh, full monetization of Uganda's economy remains the title for mm. our budget. Mm -hmm. How are we going to be fully, fully monetized. monetized with an 81 trillion budget, uh, debt? Oh, wow. Because you said we have a debt, it is yeah. 81 trillion. Mm. Mm. Now, do you know what is causing that debt to continually be 81 trillion? Because on an annual basis, you lose close to 1 trillion in corruption. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you just need, uh, a one, you, you need 81 trillion Divide by how many years would you need to pay back that debt? I think about eight or yes, nine years. Yes, yes. And you're able to pay back that debt. Mm, mm. If you can deal with the question of corruption, and, and, and women, largely because they raise children and they have values mm. and they, they believe they have a system, and they're not usually the key drivers of mm, corruption. Mm. They are actually the key drivers of morals, high standing, understanding, improvement. So no and wonder it's a shock when a woman is at the height of a corruption scandal. Exactly. <laughs> it shocks the world. Yes. Now, we, so what, what can the women do? I think one of the things that the women can come in to do now is we continue to push for accountability. Let's hold these people and make it very impossible for them to steal this money. Mm -hmm. Where is our grand scheme of things? Because we will not be able to benefit. Mm -hmm. There will never be any full monetization of mm -hmm. that uh, uh, budget or economy mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. without the money being there. And with us continuing to borrow and with us continuing to service the debt based on the money that we are borrowing. Mm. Now, one of the other things that government said they were going to focus on was the question of renewable energy. Mm. While in Kampala we have a bit of electricity, mm. we have uh, energy that is running, Umeme is signing up, hydro. Mm. ESCOM is mm. coming in, mm. some of the dams are closing, they had, mm. we had started getting load shedding. Did you know that we I started? Noticed. Yeah, I and that notice. also affects women. It affects women in terms of production. Mm. That's why we've continued to have women going for firewood. You're blowing firewood yes, yes. non-stop. Mm. And they're getting diseases from firewood. Then we have charcoal now running out. Now, why is sure. charcoal running out? Because there is no more wood no in the wood. trees. Mm. There, I mean, we have the no forest. more no, <laughs> in the forest. Mm. You go to Mabida Forest. Mm. You see the trees in front here in the middle of the, the whole forest. Is, it's all empty. Now, if you're going to talk about renewable energy, then it is the question of planting trees. It's the question of improving uh, spaces for making briquettes. Mm -hmm. We can put the women in the space for making briquettes mm -hmm. and selling that renewable energy. Mm -hmm. How are we positioning her in the renewable energy sector? Mm -hmm. And is government actually committed to that renewable energy and the energy sector? Because energy is so much a question of security. If we continue to be in blackout, then ADF can easily move around. Because at unfortunately, night, unfortunately, then the military has a higher stake in the budget. Yes, but not necessarily 
hydro or renewable mm. energy. No, I I think that the deal would be that we would need now to shift that the focus. money from military into renewable energy. Exactly. Yes. Because now we have had a bit of stability for some time. Yes, we know Congo still has these issues and whatever, but we also know there is a, an army. Is that, which there's is, an East African task force East African. now. <laughs> yes. Mm. So it's not just the Ugandan mm. army. Mm. I know we also are still in Somalia a yeah. bit yeah. to drive our interests, but also to look at the general regional interests mm -hmm. of stability. But... Uh, that too should not derail us from the real issue of we have a budget that is 81, uh, uh, 81 trillion date for mm -hmm. us to service and we have a budget that is 50 trillion which we are going to borrow exactly. and that even the people we borrow from continue to hold us at ransom. We are borrowing from China, we are in African Development Bank, mm. then now even the NSSF money for the poor it's workers is being like taken, it. they are tapping into it. Now government is saying, okay, now we're going to take away some of that money to build uh, chambers for offices to be under one roof. Then the poor people who are supposed to get midterm access are still Ooh, there, but there are also those who haven't got midterm access, but they're becoming 45 this year. Will they Will access they their money? Home. Can we get more of those accessing that money to organize better? And if those more can be women, mm -hmm. if, if we can map out more women accessing more, can we okay, reduce it? Mm -hmm. Even me, I would benefit if they reduce it and exactly. say, okay, now we are starting with 40-year-olds. Please get <laughs> hey, you, I, am I will also hey. benefit. Mm. So can we give me term access to more women? Yeah. You know, And then we can be able to see this. And maybe to bring Janet into this conversation, one of the things the president, and I listened to him, <laughs> I've just noted I really listened to him. You have to. Mm -hmm. I have to. <laughs> yeah, there's He no says choice. the important things. <laughs> so he said he wanted, uh, you know, the women in the markets, the women in mm. Chiembe, the mm. women downtown, to join the money economy. Mm. Uh -huh. And it looks like seemingly, oh, that's a good mm. thing. But that means that once they join the money economy, then they're taxable. Mm. But I know also for a fact that the women within those that, that occupy those spaces have an everyday basis kind of, mm. you know, money or subsistence. Yeah, subsistence. like subsistence. from mouth to, to stomach. And so I'm imagining on an, if on an everyday basis this person got her 10,000 and then we are going to also tax it because mm. already the things they even have are already taxed. How do we cushion her from, mm. you know, that exorbitant tax, which... Rightly so, someone would say, as a Ugandan, you should be paying taxes. But mm. I'm imagining for a person, that last, last mile woman who is living hand to mouth, mm. you know, I, I make a little bit of here and then I feed my children. How do we protect her in, in this monetization okay. narrative that we have? So if, if I look at the 49.9, that is mm. 50 million. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I look at the agenda of government of full uh, full, full monetization, monetization. monetization. Yeah. and I look at who takes the burden for care in our families yeah who takes the biggest burden for care mm -hmm. in our families if that man came home without food who 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 like who who would it be for to make sure that the, actually there is even if it's um dodo from behind mm. the house you know that even when she's not being ta ta I mean taxed at the moment she's still bearing that burden for care, mm -hmm. and that burden comes with if the person falls sick, anyone in the family falls sick, who, de who then suffers? And who so is the caretaker? They are work they yes. also have unpaid care. They the unpaid care mm -hmm. as well. So they have the unpaid care. They also have taxation um, at um, in like at the back end mm -hmm. because much as they say that they are taxing those the main the, the percentage which is in mm -hmm. the money economy mm -hmm. um, is being taxed. Mm -hmm. Even these women are getting that burden mm -hmm. there. And then when you're looking at it and you're saying, how then do we cushion this woman? How then does she even get to know that there is a budget and there's a budget that is going to affect her? Mm -hmm. Because right now, if you go and ask that last mile woman about budget, you say, what is budget? Exactly. What I know is I don't have mm -hmm. money in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I do not have food mm -hmm. to feed my, mm -hmm. my last child. So it goes back to the individual, the individual in the group, mm -hmm. that if we can tell this lady that it, it's not about the budget, it is about how then can you survive comfortably mm -hmm. with your family that you're taking care of. And the only way she will know how to survive is what is that is seemingly economic activity that she is doing that can bring mm -hmm. her money. How can I use you as an individual, as a woman, to make sure that, um, that you can do something that will feed? Because we go back to the basics, the muscles. 
mm. to the base that can feed your person. So by the time the government, first of all, the taxable base is very small for mm. the, for the Ugandan true. economy right That's now. True. By the time they reach that last mile woman, if you're saying that we're going to reach there by bringing them, to, you know, give, give, giving them disposable income, that disposable income will still go back into feeding and medical care. And my friend told me and the level of tax invasion that is happening in this country. On a large scale and on a small scale. And you know why, it's Gloria, wild. you know why people have, they just fight. It's because yes. we're not getting corruption. The, no, corruption. And corruption. We don't get the, the, the huh. feel of the taxes. Yes, we, we are not getting the, and the don't social get the services. feel of the taxes because the of corruption. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we're not getting the social services and even the little. Because I, I can tell you for a fact that there is a big burden on the seeming uh, local investors. Mm. They are ones who have really struggled. They are struggling mm. because of the taxes that they mm. have to pay for people to misappropriate mm. and not mm. use. And then they also get the feeling of the government does not, you only want tax from us. Mm. Because if you want tax from me, then you, you, you do the roads, not, not the potholes. I mean, not the pothole economy, mm. but it's tourism. Mm. Eh? Mm. <laughs> not, that's because the vehicles that are going to transport my goods are going to go through those, <laughs> those roads. Those roads. Mm. So it then gets back to the woman that if I am not doing well financially and you expect me to take care of your children, then I will not do that. Mm. I, don't know I think one labor of love Casita has held for a long time is tax. if you're giving tax <laughs> evasions to the to the foreign investors, why please can't you come give, us give us as local, the local investors? Ones. You know, and it's not being done. found women who have small shops in the village because mm. I was in the village for mm. Christmas and they told me, hmm, the government has closed in on us. We are also now paying taxes wow. for these small stalls which we have here wow. and for the spaces that we have now. I don't know what is going to happen to us. And mm. I said, welcome aboard. Yes. Because now it's, it's mandatory that you have a TIN number. Yes. They're going to tax everything. The services even. are going to be tagged. Most of the services are going to be tagged to you being able to be taxable. Mm. And you know, we are looking at a very big percentage of women who do not even understand taxation itself. Mm. Yes. Who do not understand that they're already paying taxes, taxes through the things that they buy. You know, yes. through, to, through the things Whether that they are, they are they're doing. Had you know? any funding or 20, not. 2020 hours earnings. So yes. what am I returning? You so you're still reporting <laughs> them. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, that last you have mile to woman, file. <laughs> when we are talking about uh, how we, we cushion them, mm. we have to build their resilience. We have to build their knowledge resilience. base. Yeah their knowledge base, because mm. this economic situation is just getting there. Yeah. Yeah. It is, we are just starting. And yeah. maybe be also on that so, point, yes. just to, to, to piggyback on it. Mm. One of the taglines for the 16 days of, gender, of activism against gender-based violence was against a pushback with yes. pushback. Mm. Yes. Because it looked like we had come from two years of a COVID pandemic, yeah. but in that we had teenage pregnancies, yes. and Uganda ranks third in teenage pregnancies mm. as we speak today. Mm -hmm. And so we had teenage pregnancies. We had a lot of school dropouts for, for girls, but then there was also child labor. Mm. If you went to the airport today, I don't know if it's still a story, but it the is. times I've been at the airport, there've been a lot of uniforms of girls living in this is. country. And they're between 18. There are even some 16 year olds living between 18 to 21. For the 16 year olds, they will inflate their years. But you know, I do that girl is young. Mm. And so there was a lot of pushback in the gains we had made as women and girls in, 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 in rights, in education, mm. in their urgency to know that, you know, my body must not be, you know, violated. Right. Yes. And so there was almost, you know, a semblance of too much pushback, even now as we speak. Even in marriages, we talked about marital rape. You know, the narrative that in two years, this, this a lot happened. Mm. And so we are building back. Mm. I don't know if we are building back better, but we are mm. building back. Mm. But in such a narrative, you know, what are the risk factors that we can, you know, envision and maybe also prepare to, to curb or cushion ourselves from in 2023? Because okay. the work must be done. Okay. So uh, just like you said that we are building back, if you don't know if you're building better. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like all that, most of the gains that were, have been erased by the last two years. Because w women have gone through so much in the last two years, <coughs> okay? Women have been abused sexually. Mm -hmm. Women have been the abused high. physically. Mm -hmm. Women mm -hmm. have been abused emotionally, 
Okay. And unfortunately, they also buy security of for officers. <laughs> but that, that breaks my heart because these are the, these are the people that should be able to. But they come from the same community. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, that's a thing, Trish. Mm. We're, we're looking at it. They come from the same community. You cannot say that we have responsible men in uniform when you're saying the whole population of men cannot differentiate uh, consent from you know the person who was oh, drunk. Yeah. The you know, meant to give us that so, one. <laughs> so you know, you know what I mean. So the the thing is, they they are coming from the same pool, and we have to cleanse the not cleanse really, but we have to wash through <laughs> yes. the entire Deal with that it, sticky point. The, yes. Mm. So the, the things that we have gone through have taken us steps back, mm. and some of the things have even a far much reaching impact. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when you're looking at teenage pregnancies, you don't look at it as just the person has gone out of school. Mm -hmm. Even the person, the human, the individual person will not be the same. For we know that if a person goes through such traumatic events at a young age, mm -hmm. they, their mental health is likely to suffer yeah. for a very long time if they do not get the help they need. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at a person or you're looking at a generation, for example, the senior foes now who have gotten pregnant and whatever, mm. uh, who have been uh, raped, who have got pregnant when mm -hmm. they're young, and you're expecting these people to live to their full potential. Mm -hmm if they do not get the to access to the help that they need for the things that they have gone through uh, within the last... Now, if we had 2022 to eat because much as it was in COVID, it was as harsh as... <laughs> it was as harsh as 2021 mm. because it was just... We were trudging, you know. Starting recovery. Yeah, we're, yes, we're starting mm. recovery. Mm. So the same issues that we have sung about and we are still going to do, that is the uh, sexual gender-based violence. Uh, we're going to... Talk, Poverty. We'll deal with child marriages. Poverty, mm -hmm. child marriages, um, uh, period poverty, mm -hmm. you know, we, girls not going to school for things that are not really necessarily mm -hmm. their fault. They were not, mm -hmm. they were born female and they mm -hmm. have to get access to these things. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, um, we've talked about early ma child marriages, mm -hmm. yes. Ch child labor and exploitation, you know, that, that, that exploitation. Yeah, yeah. And yes, the exploitation mm -hmm. is happening two ways, but you know, because the girl can easily get, you can get a rich man for the girl. And we know that, you know, if the rich man, the girl goes in as if exchange of gifts. Mm -hmm. So those things have a very, very big impact on the girl of tomorrow, of the girl of 2023, mm -hmm. of that leader of 2023 that we want, you know, because they all affect us in equal measures. Mm -hmm. So those are risk factors that we have to deal with and strategize for even in 2023 going forward. You know, we have to start conversations about okay so we've had we've had the sexual the sgbv talk mm -hmm. how different has it happened for us in the last, in two, the years? last two years okay mm -hmm. how different can you no know, before we were saying yes sexual gender based violence and you know uh, female genital mutilation but have we seen the magnitude of what have, is happening is what's happening mm -hmm. and what are the other compounding factors that have come in to look at because of the two period the, the periods that we have gone through now we are not talking about just SGBV. We have to say SGBV and, and mental health. Mm. SGBV and education. Mm -hmm. You know, we have conflicts in the family. How, how have they affected the girl child from going to school? So there are so many compounding factors that have come in because of the period that we have gone through. And we still have to resolve for the I'm next this, 2023. I'm very, very happy that uh, the past three, three years have helped us put a spotlight on our education a lot mm. especially in in how it safeguards the girls in how it's unfair and disparative in how we need to fix it in how the curriculum now needs to be pro the children post pandemic yes i love the totality of it whether we'll be able to implement the yes. narrative around education is a question that we need to ask ourselves but, but as, the good thing is your minister of education is a woman I hope that but helps. Karamoja will... should tell us. And Karamoja helps. should tell us. Because with the, the person, person who was in Karamoja. Karim, Karamoja <laughs> needs to join this conversation. She's, she, she's a woman. So at least for me, that there is hope there. But she needs to do one thing. She needs to tell the president to retract his statement, which he made that pregnancy would not kill the young girls. Yes. And that statement is still on record. Mm -hmm. I think she needs to find a way of telling the president that in, in this speeches of yours, find a way of crafting another statement mm -hmm. to counter the one that, the you, one made. that you made. Because it has a lasting impact. Yes. Pregnancy can kill. 
Exactly. And and just to inform him and to inform the Minister of Education that pregnancy actually kills the young girls more than more the mature, than the mature girls. Because mm. the young girl is not yet well framed to give birth. Mm. So when she got pregnant, it was a big issue mm -hmm. and it was a life threatening issue for society and for us. For, so yes. when he makes his next speech, he should focus Retract. a bit on that young girl. It is actually a fact charity that uh, uh, like partum and postpartum issues for young girls mm. lead, lead, lead to like either dire like death mm -hmm. or lasting psychological effects. Oh, wow. And lifetime. And, yes, lifetime, lasting. Because mm. we know if you just, I, I, I like, I like uh, referencing, if you look at the stories of the girls that have thrown away their babies. Yes. Mm. Oh, wow. And if you look at the girls that have or murdered or beaten up, you know, those clips that go around, then you just go back and look at the age at which they got pregnant. They had their first and, the and they had, yes, the history. Yes. The, mm. the age they got pregnant, mm. the history with, you know, their That's sexual like history. And then, and then you look at then after that, their life. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it has, because, you know, if, if you are a developed woman, like 25, whatever, if you go grown. through the grown, you know, <coughs> grow, go, go through, through the, the pregnancy, yes, yes, pregnancy, and it traumatizes and, you. Then what of that girl whose faculties we know brain development at least mm -hmm. minimum of you know it should be at eighteen and twenty years of development. Brain just the formation of the matter. The matter. Yes, you know. So now telling me that you're going to alter the path, her whole life, her whole life because of that, and you say it didn't kill her. It might not kill, kill you. But, but it would affect it society. It would also for change life. society for a long time because it, those are the mom, moms mm -hmm. of generations to come. And the children that they produce during that time, what shape are they in? Mm -hmm. uh, how many children were produced during that COVID period? And as we talk about recovery, do They're we three years now. have we tracked them? Are we looking at them? Are we looking at the young girls? Children education sector. Children. I was happy, and, and why I said that I'm happy that the, the, the first lady is the Minister of Education. It's a, it's a when, they, when they stopped the other P7 children from sitting mm -hmm. exam, they had missed a paper. Yes, yes. She was she able was to go able back to on that and said, no, 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 paper. these people have been first uh, affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. They lost two years. You can't continue to traumatize them like that. Give them a chance. Mm -hmm. Give so, him another paper. Had it not been a woman, I tell you, I swear, had it been a man who was a minister, the one who went to see that paper. I, I, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I, I, I tell you the truth. But I like if the it, initiative. I like it the fact that they woman. fought for those children <laughs> to sit their exams. Because, she did. It was because, her. Yes, I like that she fought for those because otherwise, uh, otherwise, it would have been a very, very bad thing for yes. the post future. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Two years yes. lost and then and another then two over seven years. And so they have to go through another whole cycle. Year. Just because, and it wasn't their fault. It had mm. been the education fault. So I think that uh, largely to think about recovery, the economy and women are critical things for government mm -hmm. and they should not take them lying mm -hmm. down. Because why uh, we, even when you look at the the election pattern. Yes. Uh, the bigger percentage of the voter in this country is a oh, woman. Amen. The oh, smaller amen. percentage of voters are, are men. men. So if you look at the women population, therefore, it is big. Mm -hmm. And so if women are the ones who are putting men in places of influence, or mm -hmm. they also have women in places of influence, then economy is so much an issue for women, for women. as it is an issue for government. Yeah. Actually, the government... Uh, one of the uh, things that NRM likes to pose about is that they caused women emancipation, although the movement had already, had started, already started globally, mm -hmm. and so they were just fitting so within. Just political but there is a lot <laughs> of regression that is happening at this point in time. Yes. And what should be happening is look out for what are the women doing, how do we organize women better, how do we support women, to benefit from the mm -hmm. economic spectrum, mm -hmm. because this economy will not grow without the women. Without if the you women. go to Chikubo right now, the biggest number of people are there women. are women. Mm -hmm. If you go to the people who are selling clothes mm -hmm. and yet bringing in a bale of clothes, mm -hmm. the price has shot up. Yes, They're yes. finding it difficult because of the taxes that you're exactly. talking about. Mm -hmm. What is it that government can do to improve on the bale yes. price such that the women can go back into their spaces of selling their and shoes, work. selling their clothes, mm -hmm. and be able to make a living for themselves, but also support the society yes. in which they are. Mm -hmm. And then in the market, place also the dynamics there have changed looked at the markets in Kampala there's wow. a lot of politics that is happening around the markets Actually, I'm hearing deafening switch. figures yes. of 
a hundred million US dollars for one market, and then the market vendors being asked to compensate to, to compensate. pay some of this money. And I'm saying, eh, hundred mm -hmm. million US dollars. And they've done a lot of petitioning to make sure that they don't lose their markets. Yeah. Unfortunately, the leadership will change for the markets. Yeah. But I hope the women are not sidelined in that conversation. Yes, and 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 they are trying to politicize the woman and yes. say, oh, because these women belong to the opposition, they belong to this. Can you please look at the women as women, as people who are trying to fend for their society and try to give them more information and mm -hmm. also fix them in places that mm -hmm. you know that for a fact here there will be an influence there will be a change because she's a she's woman. there that is as we wind down i mm. think I, I want us to project <coughs> into the future i hate to leave you know a conversation mm. without doing some scenario building for us to understand how we can project ourselves into tomorrow looking at you know the narrative and it might be all wrong but i hope we get it right on mm. this year mm. looking at you know the past three years the recovery period has happened we've known that an economic crisis could actually wipe us out mm. how do we you know foresee what 2023 will look like not just for the women but also for uganda as a collective okay mm. So I will be selfish and start by saying, you know, you said you want to visualize and, mm. you know, and I say that if we can um, put the mental health of these women at the forefront, mm -hmm. and I'm starting, I said I want to be selfish because that is my core area mm. of interest. Because even with the economic hardship, if, okay. if people have been empowered, you know, if they are, they are, their psychology is in a good place mm. and they're able to push back from an individual basis and be a little bit resilient mm. okay because these risk factors are alive even in 2023 so how do we then empower them so if we can have a budget for um uh, for female mental health or mm. women mental health a budget if we can have an agenda national agenda that, that's under health now yes health. have a better yes. health budget a better allocation. health budget for the women because mm. we're looking at mortality rates of women mm. you know when they're they're giving birth. We're looking at uh, um, we're looking at the girl child mm -hmm. and their sexual reproductive health. Mm -hmm. We're looking at their mental health as children because, uh, as I've said earlier, that everything now has to be tied to that. That situation is going is rough. It's still rough. Mm -hmm. You know, when they say tighten your belts, mm -hmm. they're saying uh, an individual. So now we're yeah? tightening. We're tightening. Tight, yeah. So can we tighten, hey. tighten mm -hmm. you as a person to push back as a starting point? So that you do not break. Otherwise, you will not be able to even uh, accrue the advantages, get, harness mm. some of the advantages that are coming Within through. This, yeah. Yes, mm. and of course, I want to see um, uh, an empowered girl child economically. I want to see reduced, uh, reduced uh, uh, SGBV rates. Mm. I want to see uh, participation of women in their issues, in national development issues. You know, national development issues. Now we are going into elections because they're going to we start. Are mid -term, yeah. We are midterm. Yeah, midterm. So midterm, we've already, we already started. You know, we've they're already, already started. doing election campaigns, uh -huh. and campaigns, it's not yet time. Know? And we are it's saying not. that for the woman, it's not yet time, but but we are saying for the woman, how then can you position yourself so that you're not affected by the values that will be meted out? Mm. Of, I'm not saying it will be meted out, but how can you then positively position yourself? for what we know is coming yeah. when we have just started mm. here mm. as an individual. Mm. Are you a candidate? Are you a voter? Mm. Are you just a woman who is, you know, uh, who is trying to make a living to survive in this economic situation? Mm. How can you as a person? And that only goes back to healing, to empowering, it's to resilient, resilient mm. and psychosocial support mm. of that girl child, of that woman, of that leader. Yes, charity as we wind up. So, <clears throat> uh, if you look at the global picture, it has been grim because World Bank came out and said, "Look, we're, we're not, not going to, there. we're not going to have a good year because mm -hmm. there is a war in Ukraine and the uh, the war in Russia. If it mm -hmm. continues for one more year, then it's going to affect the whole globe." And they feared they could get into recession. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes when the globe talks like that, we want to ignore them and say, oh, it is those American things. Mm. But this time, it's real having effects on us because of what I said, food. Yes. That because we don't have food, if we had our food, 
then we'd say to hell, like, continue okay. to talk about your whatever. Mm. We have food. Mm -hmm. But now our food is threatened. Mm. So going forward this year, first support the women, support every Ugandan to produce food for their home, but mm. a surplus to go to the silos. Mm. Two, as we begin this year, government needs to be very deliberate in putting the citizen at the center. Like Glo, I want to mm. join and say, I want less women dying at giving birth. Yes. So the women should not die. We've had a big number of them die at childbirth. 2023, we should purpose to cut that number mm -hmm. to entirely 0.01 or 0.02. That mm. is a high tide question to ask. But if every woman leader in Uganda makes it an issue, mm -hmm. maternal death mm -hmm. becomes an issue for you, the vice president, for you, the prime minister, for you, the minister of education, for you, the minister of gender and mm -hmm. women affairs, for you, the deputies, the prime minister, uh, the deputy prime minister, third, fourth, mm -hmm. make it a big issue. And then the third projection that I want, food security was one, mm -hmm. two, less women dying. Mm -hmm. Three is the question of the girl-child education. Yeah. We need to go back and focus on the girls and their education. The gains made, how do we progress more mm -hmm. on that front and what quality is there? How do we support our girls more than just export them to Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. to Qatar, mm -hmm. to work as domestic workers, but how do we support them to get educated and also find useful things to do for themselves within this country. Yeah. So if there is innovation in the energy sector, how are we positioning the girl child for science studies? If government has decided its biggest policy is science, then how do we get the girls to influence the science spectrum? Because girls are good scientific brains. They yes. too can cause a change. We have nurses, we have doctors, and I think if you have Women doctors who you've seen, they take a bit of time with their patients. They spend a lot of that time. How do we support them to get more into those spaces? Mm -hmm. And so we have a better country. Thank you. And thank you very much, ladies, because you make these conversations worthwhile. Even for the next child that will mm. come and the next girl that will have these conversations, I think there is something they can bank on. Mm. Of We've had this conversation before. Mm. For me, 2023, my projection is in collective organizing. And I think that's where I'm going to put my foot, that we come together. Because the issues that matter will be heard more if we have a collective voice. Thank you for joining us today. It was nice having you around. I'll see you in the next conversation. Bye for now. <music>